Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know you can make it? Yes. I said, do you know that you can make it? Yes. Do you know that all you did is Yes. Can you say that? Amen. One of my, I believe it was David said, <laughs> uh -huh. I will look to the hills yeah. from which comes Come my head. Can you say amen? Yeah. 
Amen. In other words, there's no way that they that they'd never get full on their alcohol because they never quit drinking. Yes. And when they started drinking, they just kept drinking. There was no cutting off point. Right. The only way it ended was they either fall out or pass out. Yeah. Then the, the consumption would end. But with the believer, our consumption should be addictive. Yeah. We, we should be to the point with the Word of God that we're consuming with, uh, with, with no end to our consumption. Right. Yeah. But most of us have to almost have a gun pull on us to even open up the Bible. Let me say that. What I want to talk about tonight is spiritual intoxication. Yes. Can you say yes. that? Yes. The natural intoxication is just a, a picture of self demolition yes. from the inside out. Can you say that? But, but when you put the Word of God in you, it don't uh, uh, tire you up, it builds you up. It don't tire you down, it builds you up. Amen. Uh, in other words, uh, we need to get drunk in the Spirit. Some have been in the church all their life and they've never been high on the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Because some have been in church calling themselves Christians for, for, for years and they never spoke in no tongue. Uh, I might be stepping on a few feet, but you can't say you got the Holy Ghost and without no evidence. Can you say that? Evidence will make you talk right and walk right and everything else right. Can you say amen? The Holy Ghost is, is the spiritual carpenter in our life. Last night we, we talked about uh, who we have become in God. Y'all remember who you become in God from last night's message? The God of the Word of God so we have been, become kings and priests in the earth. Amen. And also we learned last night that now we are built on a foundation and that foundation and cornerstone is Christ. Yes. And we are being built up as a people of God to be a holy house and habitation for God. Yes. So tonight I just really want to know, want you to know what, what you need to have in you for God to really come in and possess you. Yes. Amen. So, just, so tonight, I just want to factor in on what you need to have in you. Yeah. Amen. Let's recap just a little bit of what, what I said last night. I said, I said last night that if, if, if you are a born-again believer, you have a priestly calling on your life. Uh -huh. Amen. You're not called to be no priest. A lot of people are trying to figure out who they call and what they're called to do or be in God. You're called. You're not called to be a priest. You are a priest. Right. Amen. And being a priest, Jesus gave you access into the throne room, Amen. into the Holy of Holies when he died on the cross. And the temple or the curtain in the temple ran it from top to bottom. That gave you access. So you are a priest. And then I said, you need to carry yourself. Amen. 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 As a believer, you don't need to just carry yourself any old kind of way. Amen. You need to carry yourself as a priest. Yes. When folks see you, you ought to look like a representative of the God. Here. Amen. 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 And someone that goes before God or continuously in a holy convocation. Can you say that? In the body of Christ, we, we find what's happening in the church, and this is this is a serious event. The church is being torn down from the inside out yes. because of drunken spirits inside the house. Amen. What, what I mean by drunken spirit is uh, folk inside the house are, are, are too busy hurting other people's feelings yeah. and making them feel bad. Notice I told you last night, Paul had to straighten out this mess in the Ephesian church because you had Jews and Gentiles and the Jews felt like they had they were privileged characters because they were born Jews. And, but Paul began to, to let them all know everybody equal at me. Everybody is equal. Yeah. Pastor ain't no more than you. Yeah. You ain't no more than the pastor. The deacons ain't no more than nobody. There's no big eyes and big you. There's no colonels or generals oh, right. in the house of the faith. Amen. So Paul began to, 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 to encourage them that they are on an equal playing field. 
Inferiority is a killer. How many know that? When, when you make somebody feel that, that's why it's terrible. It's really bad for us to form cliques in the church. Then I just talk up here. Because when you, uh, 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 in other words, when you separate yourself from others inside the household of faith, you put a wall of division up there and you make them feel insignificant. And this was the position that the Jews were put in or the, the Gentiles were put in by the Jews. Yeah. Amen. They, they were made to feel less than what they were. Amen. Yeah. So, so inside the household of faith, as believers, we're all on the same plan. Yeah. Yeah. I just hold a title. I just hold a position, but I am no greater than nobody else that say they are a child of God. Amen. Amen. In other words, there ain't no number one priest, number two priest, number three priest, number four. That we all on the same plane. Can you say amen? Paul was encouraging the believers at the Ephesians because some was being, their feelings were hurt. And you know, you got church folk in today's churches. They will leave at the drop of a hat the moment they feel it. And somewhere in the household of faith who hurt folk feeling and don't care nothing about it. That's because they are not spiritually intoxicated. They are really intoxicated. Amen. So Paul began to inform the, the, the believers that they're all a part of God's family and God is the Father of us all. Amen. Paul wanted them to know that God's grace God's glory and His mystery should be shown in us. Now, what, what, what are we talking about when we talk about God's mysteries being shown in us? At that particular time, the angels was looking on. And the angels are still looking on. And what Paul is wanting them to know is the angels need, need to be, uh, in other words, impressed by what God is doing in us. But we're too busy trying to impress each other. Amen. I mean, the church anymore is just a show. Folk in the choir try to outsing folk. Folk in choir, uh, song groups try to outsing. We try to outperform folk in the household of faith. And what we should be doing is making the angels like, what in the world yes. is God doing? In other words, they ought to be able to see God. Can you say that? Manifest it in us. Amen. But we, we too busy trying to put on the show. Amen. Preachers trying to out preach. Amen. That's why I just backed off of trying to hold my ear years ago. I backed off of trying. I used to preach pastor until I about fall out. Some of the members that believe I had to come up there and get me because I'm, I'm wearing myself out trying to preach hard and tire a tune. And God told me, said, you need to quit that because that ain't getting nobody here. They're just seeing the show. Yeah. They, they just ask you to come because you've got a tune. Yeah. They just ask you to come because you can hook it up. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. But what God wants the, the people of God to know is folk need to see God in you. Yeah. Folk need to see what God is doing on the inside yeah. of you. And yeah. If you ain't intoxicated, folk will never know you're spiritually drunk. Right. Can you say amen? Yeah. Some folks sit in church and look at other folks being moved by the Spirit of God and say to himself, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? I believe if you've been washed in the blood, if God is the center of your life, if nothing else matters but the kingdom of God, you're going to act unseemly, you're going to get the side to say and folks are going to look on you and see that God is working in your life, that God is here, that you're not, uh, 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 not uh, 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 trying to get drunk, you already drunk. To sit to death. Oh, yes. I said it last night. We don't know what we've become coming you know. He said, I've caused you to sit to death in heavenly places. 
Amen. Amen. We, 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 we somebody. Yeah. We something special. There's more to us than we die. Yeah. But the thing of it is, we can't let folk in the church that don't get intoxicated stop God from doing what he's doing in our own life. Amen. Stop making us become. A lot of times we let folk stop us from being what God called us to be at first bath. At believers' voice of deliverance. At whatever church we attend. We let folk in the congregation stop us from being what God has called us to be. But we need to get wrapped up. We need to get tied up. We need to get tangled up in God. And everything else around us don't matter. It don't matter what folk are saying to us. It don't matter what folks are saying about us. It don't matter what folks are doing to us. We are still wrapped up and tied up in God. Paul, he, he had to infuse this yes. in, in the Gentile believers at the Ephesian church because they were letting these folk get on their nerves. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know something? It's sad when a, a born again believer starts slowly growing in God and then their folk around them start picking from I says, I, I can assume some of this went on in the Ephesian church. Folks start picking fun because they felt like they, they ain't where we are. Uh -huh. And they start picking fun at the Gentiles. And it happens in this day and time. All you got to do is say, God told, called you to do something. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'll start hearing a little joke, a little colored, off-colored joke yeah. about what God is trying to do yeah. in your life and make you to be. And so what happens if you ain't careful, you'll cool off when yes. you say that. Amen. So Paul was, was more or less trying to infuse in the body of Christ at Ephesians that, hey, you are on an equal plan. Ain't nobody in there no more holding you. They might have been in the Word a number of years more than you, but they don't know no more about God than you do. Then you say that. You know that God's a way back. Yes. You know that he's a burden back. Yes. You know that he's a heavy load. Yes. You know he's a real out of the I have to get a middle of a whip. You know he's a big yes. over trouble. They don't know no more than you do. Yes. And they say, man, it's sad that folks that think they know work think they have a right. Then you say, man, and we'll put a coat down that we think don't know no word. Then you say, man, but the thing of it is, we, we find ourselves being judgmental. Yes. Amen. And we stop them from being intoxicated. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but everybody in church ought to one time run yeah. out of church right uh -huh. Everybody in here, and if you say to Jesus, you've been washed in the blood, you ought to be able to and have that freedom and liberty yeah. to run around the church like right yeah. a like you done lost your mind. So Paul was he, he was concerned about the church and he knew what was happening to those Gentile believers and he had to head it off because he knew it was going to tire them down. And he told them, let me tell you something, I'm bowing my knees. Can you say that? Every night you wouldn't be, brother, where you are today if somebody didn't pray for you. Can you say that? I'm kind of hollering through this mic. Somebody give me a microphone. You wouldn't be where you are if somebody wasn't praying for you. In other words, I didn't get to be where I am because I stepped into God. I got to be where I am because God, uh, somebody prayed for me. Yeah. Somebody got on their knees. Some holy woman, some holy man decided, hey, I'm going to invest in that young man to God put in that person what I want to be in. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we didn't get to, to where we are. Just call me somebody special. Yeah. Somebody will pray. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? Somebody knew my track record. Yeah. Somebody knew that it was easy for me to be influenced and pull back into the world. Yeah. So somebody got on their knees, brother Tommy, and prayed. And then we see Paul telling the Ephesian Gentile, I bound my knees yeah. unto the God and Father of us all. Yeah. And I've asked him to. Yeah. To strengthen you. Can you say amen? Somebody say strength. We in the church need to be strengthened. We don't need to be torn down. We need to be built up. 
Can you say amen? amen. That he might grant you power amen. through his spirit. Right. Somebody say power. power. That he might give you power through his spirit. No, yes. so you're going to have to have power yes. this day and time. Right. Can you say amen? amen. Only those things about shout is about having power. Yes. Jesus said, Behold, yes. I give you power. Yes. He didn't say a thing about shout. He said, I'm going to give you power.
for my late brother-in-law had more more of this in him than most of us have been in church all in years. When he was dying of cancer, and his sister said, "Brother, you don't beat it. You don't beat stabbing. You don't beat gunshots. You don't beat fights. You can beat this." And he said, "Well, sis, I don't know." I said, one thing I do, he said, one thing I do know, if I don't beat it, he's still gone. Yeah. Yeah. John is told that the Christian is a part of Christ, that we need to be shaped yeah. and fashioned yeah. into God, yeah. that their hope will not waver. No, he's real.
It's okay. But I go home and get me a taste. <laughs> and it ain't in my refrigerator. And it ain't in my cup. It's here in me and talking to God. Yeah. Yeah. Say, God, I pray. Yeah. 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 I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. Important to me with them, which is 
Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes, yes. My intoxication has caused me to do it. Can you say, Amen. 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 Am